Here we have a quadrilateral ABCD with diagonal AC shown here. Um, we also know the values of four angles up to a factor X. And we also know that side BC is the same length as a side CD. And we ask to find that value X. So how are we going to solve this problem? Now, uh, generally when we consider solving geometric problem and we don't know what to do, um, I normally suggest just trying to find whatever we can find. So normally there are two things we need to find. It's angles and the sides, okay? Lengths. So in what you do, you start looking what you can find. You may start with angles, find all the angles you can. Then when you're done, try to uh, get something out of the lengths, out of the sides, if you can do anything there. Once you've done that, you cannot see how to continue. You can go back to angles and keep doing it, and keep doing it, keep doing it, until you see how to find the solution to your problem. Now, in this particular case, we have a problem where we don't have lengths. We have kind of relationship between two lengths, between BC and CD, which we're told uh, congruent to each other. And we have some angles, and we are asked to find some also angles. So um, this kind of problem you will be solving normally by looking at the ways you can make isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, um, on the way while you circling between finding angles, finding the sides, and things like that. So all these things should come together and should help you solve this problem. So let's see what we can find here. Uh, first, what I see is I have these two angles, A and C, those blue angles, and they're congruent to each other. They're both 3x. Uh, the other thing I noticed, those angles actually alternate the interior angles. And if alternate interior angles are congruent, it means they, there are two parallel sides. It's A, B, and C, D. Okay. All right. What else can we do? Well, um, when I just look what I have, I can say, well, uh, let's continue using our angles. Well, there are four angles here, but there's also this angle B and angle D, which I can find. To find angle B, I just simply look at the triangle ABC. I know the sum of all angles should give me 180. I see two angles, uh, 3x and now this is x, so it means that angle B should be 180 minus 4x. In a similar way, by looking at triangle ADC, I can find an angle D, which will be 180 minus 8x. So, what else can I do? That's pretty much complete my study of the angles at this moment. And once I'm done with angles, I'll go back to sides. So what do I see about the sides? Well, I see that there are two sides that are congruent to each other, BC and CD. And I also remember, well, I should try to probably find some isosceles or equilateral triangles. Well, I can make isosceles triangle out of these two congruent sides. If I connect the B and C D, I get triangle BCD, which is isosceles triangle, and we know uh, the angles at the base of isosceles triangles are congruent, so these two blue angles are congruent, and I also can find them, because I know the third angle is 4x, the x plus 3x, these two angles are going to be 90 minus 2x. So, what else can I do? Well, one thing I can do, I can try to find this angle, ABD, this angle, ADB. Well, I can easily find them because I know whole angle B, whole angle D, and I know those blue angles. So you can clearly see that 
you know, whole angle B is angle ABC, which is 180 minus 4x. This green blue angle is 90 minus 2x. I subtract one from another one, and I'm going to get this angle. The other way to look at this angle and how we can find it is to remember that this angle I'm looking for and this blue angle here, D, are alternate interior angles for two parallel lines, A, B, and C, D, and alternate angles, alternate interior angles for parallel lines are congruent. We also know that. That's another way to find it. And that's going to be also 90 minus 2x. And now we see that these two angles here at the top are congruent to each other. Right? So NBD in this case split this big angle B into two congruent parts, which means BD is a bisector of this angle B. Now again, I start remembering something about isosceles triangles. I say, hey, there is a property. If I have an isosceles triangle and there is an um, angle bisector, well, one of those three angles, there's an angle bisector. That angle bisector is also an um, opposite side bisector and an altitude. Well, that may be leading me somewhere. So what we're going to do here is let's build and I saw this triangle here. So we have this BD as a bisector there. All right. The way I'm going to do it is very simple. I'm going to put a point E on the side BC so that BE equals to AB. And then I'm going to connect A and E. And now I got ABE as an isosceles triangle. All right. Now I got isosceles triangle, I can try to find all the angles in this triangle. The angle B I already know, it's 180 minus 4x. This one, we can write it here again. And we know that this small angle A here and small angle E here have to be congruent. And that's why those two angles should be 2x, right? And if those two angles are 2x, especially this one, BAE, but that is a part of the angle BAC, which is 3x. Okay, So it means that this small angle here, EAC, that angle has to be x. Okay, But now look what's happening. If I look at those orange angles, they're both x, they're congruent. So now if I look at triangle AEC, I have two congruent angles in this triangle. It means that this triangle is isosceles. Okay? It means that AE and EC are the same length. So let's make them green. All right, so uh, let's see what can do, what we can do. Well, uh, the next thing I'm kind of thinking, well, I have this point E and it's kind of orphan. It's not really connecting to many things, but it looks to me that uh, connecting E to D kind of a natural things to do. So let's just do that. Okay. All right. But now when I look at this thing, I kind of look at this and I look at this A, B, E, D. That looks like a kite to me. It has two parts that seems to be looking very close to each other, almost identical. I'm talking about this purple triangle and this uh, yellowish triangle, right? But reality is those two triangles actually identical. Those triangles are congruent. Why? Well, because the side AB of one triangle is the same as side BE of another triangle, same length. BD, they share between them. And also those two blue angles at B, they're congruent. So those two triangles will be 
a congruent by two side two sides and the angle between them something called SAS criteria since they're congruent it means that the respective sides and angles are also congruent in these two triangles in particular side AD should be congruent to side DE they should be the same length right but if they are the same length now look at the triangle ADE it's an isosceles triangle and in isosceles triangles angles at the base are congruent so one angle as you see x plus 5x it's 6x so the other angle also should be 6x right well let's continue looking measuring or calculating all the other angles so there's angle 2x and 6x so the question is what is this angle well this obviously has to be 180 minus these two angles it's given me 180 minus 8x now what i can do for example find this angle edc or cde in that if i look at the triangle dec i find that i know two angles in this triangle well, that will allow me to calculate the third angle is 180 minus the other two. And if I do, I get it equal to 4x. And now, and now, let's see what we have here. And what we have here is that the triangle DEC has two angles which are congruent. Well, it means that this triangle is isosceles triangle. It means that DE is the same as CE. So the red line is the same as the green line. But notice that there's another green line, AE, which is the same length as CE. So both the green lines we can make red. And now we're pretty much done. Notice that we have a triangle AED. This triangle is red. All three sides are the same length. This is an equilateral triangle. And we know that in equilateral triangles, all angles are 60 degrees. Well, I see that one angle here is 6x, so 6x should be equals to 60 degrees that means that x is 10 degrees now uh, there are two points two things i want to say uh, first of all now you see the how we found this x here using geometrical tools there's another video i made earlier where i go purely trigonometric way and you can watch this video watch the other video and compare and see which one you like better, which one is easier for you. The other point I would like to make is um, about this point E, okay? So what I did here, when I put this point E, I assume that point E is between B and C, okay? So that will happen if the length B, same as AB, is less than the length BC. And the question is, why is this? Okay, is it always going to be this, this way? Or maybe just this, you know, if you look at this drawing, it, yeah, it looks this way. But is this drawing really correct? Maybe there's something wrong with this drawing. So the truth is, this is correct. Point E will be between B and C. And BE and AB is going to be less than BC. To kind of prove this, what we need to remember from geometry is in a triangle the side that lays opposite of a small angle is going to be smaller the side that lays opposite of the larger angle is going to be larger so notice that AB lays opposite of the angle X and the side BC lays of the opposite of the angle 3X 3x is greater than x, that's why 
BC is greater than AB.